Bir sonraki konuşmacımızı. I'll leave the floor now to our next speaker, Hayk Martirosyan. He worked at the Turkology department at Yerevan State University, and later on he worked as a research fellow in various places, and he conducts research uh, about the German Aid Society for Armenian Relief. So he'll be speaking about German missionary activities in the Ottoman Empire. I'll be speaking in Armenian. Now I'll be speaking about the role of German missionaries' educational activities in one province based on German resources. So there were people from Switzerland speaking German and the German missionary was accepted because this title was what I preferred because there was the German mission. So the missionary activities in these regions started in the second half of 1890s and it had a very humanitarian point of view and this appeared like a repercussion to the Abdul Hamid massacres or killings. Now previously at the empire, there were also some other missionary activities. And later on, throughout the years, in some places with heavily uh, Armenian population dominance, the, some other missionary organizations also started their operations. Charitable Aid to the Christian Orient, the German Union, was one of them. And also the German Aid Society for Armenian Relief, Frankfurt Committee, was another one. And then Lepsis had also established the German Orient Mission. Christopher, Christopher uh, Mission for the Blinds or the Jerusalem Union or Kaiserwert Compassionate Nuns House were some of the other ones. However, the Armenian orphans uh, received aid after the Hamid killings. And the Frankfurt Committee, which was active in Van, was the Frankfurt branch, well, the Van branch of the Frankfurt Committee was, as I said, the charitable aid to the Christian Orient German Union organization. And there was a second congress organized in Frankfurt. So they decided to uh, overtake the care duty for 400 orphans from Van Harput and Marash. Most of them were also being cared for in the orphanage in Bebek. Again, in September of that same year, Thanks to aid that was received from Germany, 
other children were also taken care of. Now, for some period, they were with the American missionaries, but this was funded by the Germans. American missionaries, George and Martha Reynolds, managed that center. But it was funded by the Germans, and more and more children came. In 1899, this amount was about 270 children. And all in all, in the whole center, the number of orphans amounted to about 500. Now, I want to speak briefly. This charitable aid to the Christian Orient Association's first official was priest Reusler, who came to the city in the year 1901. However, Reusler doesn't stay here very long. And in 1902, in April, Poland Patronkin replaces the priest Reusler. Patronkin had worked in Urfa previously. Well, very interestingly, they do not meet in Van, but they meet on the street in Yerevan, which is a very interesting fact. And then this mission center in Van has new officials coming in. Kristen Durer, Clara Lise, Anna Wächter, Martha Kleis, Anna Abeglen, Anna Greiner, Johanna Spöri, and his wife Frida Spöri, and many other ones. So it's about 20 people, more or less. Until 1902, the financial aid of the center starts to get more Germanized and more autonomous. So it starts to break out of the American branch, so to speak. And then they establish new centers, like a, an orphanage for boys, an orphanage for girls, or they have a center for cotton yarn making or um, tailoring, lace embroidery-like workshops, and also a bakery. However, because of typhus, Pauline Patrunkin La, uh, dies. So this new orphanage starts to be called as the House of Patrunkin. In this picture, you see the workers of this association and what they have signed. So this was all not for a single person, but in 1906, this was signed by all the workers. So this is like an agreement. Now, one of the most important features of the German missionary work in Van are the training activities. Now, at the beginning, before the Germans arrived, the children went to American missionary schools. And the president of this center was uh, calling the children the blue birds because of the um, blue uniforms they were wearing. But although the Germans have played an important role in the education, still it must be stated that higher education was always managed by the Americans. So when the primary level education was completed, 
under the German missionaries than the successful ones went on to the school of American missionaries. And then they were sent out to Van and the surrounding villages so that they could work as teachers. And once again, the founders were the German missionaries. So in 1903, three girls graduated and in 1904, five boys were uh, studied at the school. So in 1906, finally, the German Missionary Center uh, completes its evolution and starts to operate autonomously and separates from the American missioners. In 1907, it's the Germans managing. You see in the picture, the German school for boys is the newly built orphanage for boys. So the primary school activities particularly get more dynamic after the revolution of the Young Turks. Now something very interesting happens in 1910. Sultan Mehmet Reşat V gives out a um, imperial order where um, it is permitted uh, that these schools are recognized. So certain permissions are given and that the school diplomas are also declared valid. So the Germans get more competent in their training activities. But of course, uh, we need to say that the Turkish-German relations play a role in here. This is the um, thank you letter by Spuri. Well, then the Germans established two schools in one. One is in Aikestan neighborhood, the other in Kale neighborhood. And Spriorin, the manager of the missionary center, says that from 1907 to 1912, 1,200 students studied at this school. And in 1913, it was 250 students studying at this center from the center who came from the one center. Correction, 250 students studied at the center and 45 students came from this uh, one city center to study at this orphanage. So this was like a home of um, learning for these children. Now, what was taught in these schools? Armenian, Ottoman, mathematics, religion, particularly the Old Testament history, music, handcrafts, German, starting with the fourth grade. And after the Young Turks revolution, physical education classes, and until that revolution, it was seen as a class which supported the revolution. Johanna Spruri, Anna Wexler, Kate Erold, Marta Kleis are some of the names who are foreigners active in the school. And then there are also six men, four women, Armenian teachers working at the school. And from the former orphans who had studied at the center, 26 of them had become teachers and were teaching already at the uh, schools around in the region. So it is for sure that about 300 Armenian orphans a year studied at the primary school education opened in one by the German missionaries. In 1913, under the uh, management of Karl Blank from the Marash mission, the Germans built a new school in Van. And their aim is to give more convenient circumstances for all students 
both studying at the center and both coming from the city center of Van. The school was opened on May 29th, and the Russian Consul General in Van also participates in the opening of the opening ceremony of the school. And according to Johanna Shiburi, this Consul General advocates for the school and also helps the school to get the necessary permits. Well, the German missionaries have also some primary school uh, level uh, activities also in the villages. So as I said before, when the orphanage students receive the education that is necessary at the center, then uh, the students receive financial aid by the the financial aid from the center, and they were sent off to the villages as teachers and priests. And because of the Protestant propaganda uh, which was going on, hand in hand with the training activities in 1904, some serious problems occur with the Armenian Apostolic Church. And this is why it was banned that some, that these teachers who were trained in the center would well, they couldn't teach at the uh, village schools. Uh, thankfully, uh, luckily, um, both parties worked to solve this problem, and the disputes are solved between the missionaries and the church, and they decide to develop joint projects. And in order to develop joint projects, a, a committee was established, with two Armenian apostolic clerics and two missionaries, which accelerates the efforts of the s teachers. And there are more and more schools in the villages under the uh, protégé of the center. Now there's a special situation. In the villages, during the winter months, the number of students tends to rise because during the hot summer months, the children were helping their families doing field work so they could not attend school. And in some villages, in the harsh winter conditions, these schools gave also food to the students. So this really serves like a home for the poor. After the revolution of the young Turks, uh, the number of missionary school, the number of village schools under the protege of the missionaries increase, and we have to say that there are sometimes uh, oversight visits from the mission center to the village schools. Johanna Shiburi talks about one of these visits. In 1912, he says he visited 14 villages. He gives names of the teachers, the number of students, etc. And he also uh, follows closely the uh, center's teachers activities. So they um, have deliberations with these teachers. In 1912, there is a conference organized in one for the village teachers. And there are six problems mentioned. One, church and school relations in the villages. Two, relations between uh, teachers and the villagers. Three, the methodology of religious education and the purpose. Four, attracting the attention of the students during class, the school roads, and how the village teacher ideally should look like. So this shows that uh, there was a big importance attached to the teachers. And of course, the number of students always change. And according to Frida Shibiori, Johanna's wife, 
In 1913, there were a thousand students studying only in 17 villages. So this was only the village number, mind you. And another important situation was many people who taught at the village schools came from the German orphanage and taught as teachers at the villages later on. Now, just to make a comparison, here's what we can say. As of 1913, all the centers of charitable aid to the Christian Orient, German Union, has trained 3,361 students with 44 European and 72 Armenian teachers. So, in 1914, the number of village schools under the protection of the or under the auspices of the one center uh, reached its peak level with 20 villages. Particularly in the village called Voske Park, which is Kara Aj, to Pertak village, here's a list that you see. These are the villages around Van, like Harin or Arin is one of them. And in 1914, the number of students here was over 1,200 students. This is only the number for the villages. We see it in the list. the German classes, the names of the teachers, the number of students, etc. Particularly in the Voske Park village, you see it. I cannot show it to you right now. Rupen Horsapian was the teacher. Darman, Darman Kyoy, Karavet Grigorian, and Sika Abraham. Abrahamian, in Shushans, Hovhanes Chamichian, in Kurubash, Krikor Manukian, Gentanans, Hazar Yezarian, Tovazan, one teacher, Razi Shahan Garabatian, Shalbai village, Armenakov Nasian, his wife teaches handcraft class, and there are three other teachers, Argak village, Aram Krikorian, and four other teachers, in Avera, Kevork, Minatsegayan, and it goes on like that. However, just like in the city of Van, in the villages as well, the schools did not have a long uh, life, actually. The First World War and the Armenian Genocide also devastate the training activities in Van. With the Armenian voluntary troops, uh, help and when the Russian army retreats, the majority of the children in the center migrate to Caucasia. Uh, 41 students uh, attempt to flee to Russia, fail, so they return. They come back to Van with the leadership of Kitty Ehold and then they stay in Van. Then, again, with the leadership of Kit Erold, once again, they uh, leave Van, and this time they go to Caucasia. Some go to the orphanage in Tbilisi, others go to the orphanages in Yerevan and in Iktir. And some of these students are taken over by Israel Tarzian, one of the older students of this uh, association who was trained in uh, German Dillenburg city, Dillenburg, and he takes some of these students. Then some of the teachers in the center continue teaching in Armenian schools in Tbilisi and even become uh, 
private teachers and they give home lessons, lessons at home. Um, in the first retreat, all of them, almost all of the German orphanages uh, burned down in one and only the new school building uh, is still standing. So to summarize the main activities is what we can say. Starting from the autumn of 1986, the Germans start training and education activities in one and in 10 years time it becomes autonomous and they start continuing their efforts in their own missionary centers. And their efforts starting from the primary school area continue in different areas as well. And it wasn't only orphans studying at the schools of the missionary center but also students coming from the Armenian families from the province. There are about 300 students studying at the German schools in general in Van, and the number of village schools uh, under the um, auspices of the center increase further and further, and on the eve of the First World War, this amount rises to 20, and usually the teachers are the old students of the center, and the number of students who are trained in these village schools continue to rise, and in 1913-14, this rises up to 1,200 in one and the surroundings. Thank you.